Today we're going to show you how easy it is to set up a token bridge using Hyperlane in just two CLI commands. So just in a couple minutes. So obviously you're going to need to have the CLI installed. Here's the command to do that. And then also you're going to need Node installed, obviously, as a prereq for that. Um, and I've already got it installed just so that we could speed things here along. I also made sure to have my private key for my wallet um, already exported. So I exported hip key so that it gets loaded into the CLI. Um, it's got funds on both of the chains I'm deploying on today um, that I'm going to be bridging between. I also have, obviously, the token that I want to move from one chain to another. So now that that's all set up, let's dive in. So first of all, I'm going to pick something inside the Hyperlane network. So you can go take a look at the Hyperlane registry or Hyperchain is a really cool community project that basically shows here's the current existing set of chains that I can actively set up a token bridge between. And for today's uh, kind of experiment, we're going to do base to Zora. Um, there's a lot of awesome meme coins on base. And so I'm going to grab one uh, that's the top one. Um, and it's called Brett. And I'm going to be moving that over to Zora so that I can uh, expand my, my meme uh, universe. So it, it's actually just one command to get started here. And it's hyperlane warp init. And it'll walk me through basically the sets of questions that will answer They'll create a config for me. Like we said, because my hip key is already um, stored, it can derive my um, wallet address, and so that is correct. I am deploying on mainnet, and so that gives me this set of chains. Um, this is a little tricky, but you're going to be using just arrow keys up down to navigate, and you're using space to select and enter to finally confirm. And you're using space for selecting chain A and B, so base. And then all the way down there is Zora to get the full scenic tour of all the chains. That's a lot of chains, and it keeps getting bigger. Um, and so I've got both, and I'm going to hit enter. So here's something that's important to know and learn. Uh, so there's a couple different uh, kind of uh, important types of warp routes. So the three major ones that you've got to know are native, collateral, and synthetic. And so native is just the gas token of the chain. Uh, so that's typically Ethereum, or unless it's a custom gas token. And so think you're going between Ethereum and Optimism. They're both ETH, and that'd be like a native to native route. In general, let's say this meme coin kind of example, I've got a collateral in synthetic, where I've got the collateral, uh, that's the token, and I want to mint a representation of it uh, that basically is tied to the value that's locked on that. Uh, original chain. So my uh, token is locked on base and now I get to move around on Zora or any other chain in Hyperlane that I'm minting the synthetic on. That is kind of a representation tied to that collateral. And so because base is where the Brett token lives, I'm going to hit enter for collateral. And I'm going to reuse the existing mailbox and infrastructure. So Hyperlane mailbox, kind of like the defined uh, location where messages get sent to and from um, base. And so I'm reusing that. It also gives me down the road the ability to just reuse whoever's running the relayer there and the existing security there. And now I'm just going to paste in the token um, from uh, Brett's contract address. And I, I just pulled this up from CoinGecko or you can get it from Etherscan. And I'm just going to drop this in here. And obviously on Zora, there is no uh, Brett there yet. So I'm minting basically this brand new token that's going to represent the Brett down in Bora, uh, uh, the Brett down in base. And so we're going to hit enter. And so now we've got our base in synthetic. And yes, we are reusing the existing contracts and infra there. So awesome. We've got 50% of the way there. We've got our config. And now based on this setup, um, we are going to now deploy the contracts on chain so we can use them. So let's get to it. So hyperlane warp deploy. And let's see if we've got our deployment plan correct. Um, you could verify these contracts if you're serious about going to production or, or later um, so that the source code is on chain. But for now, we're just going to skip that for the purpose of this demo. Um, you can use your Etherscan API key or whatever is the explorer um, for that chain. And this deployment plan is, in fact, correct. Um, we are using kind of some quick kind of trusted assumptions to just get up and running. So this is not for production. It's kind of trusted relayer. And now we're just kicking it off. So here we are deploying on chain.
All right, and so there we go. So we went through all the different steps to deploy the contract from the game plan uh, to de of deployment to here we are. So we're all set. And this is going to be pretty important, this final config. So we're going to save that and take it over to pop into a live demo. Um, and then our gas price was pretty darn cheap. Um, I can't do the math in my head, but I think it's like a couple cents uh, on base and maybe uh, maybe a cent or two on Zora. So that's awesome to see. And yeah, so we're going to take this and actually do a live demo for you in the Hyperlane Sandbox on Superbridge. All right, so we've got our contracts deployed and we want to test out bridging. And we actually want to do it in a way that allows us to potentially go to production down the road. So there's two routes to get your UI going right out of the box with warp routes. One of them is Superbridge. And so they've provided this handy kind of uh, sandbox for you to test out. And then from there, you actually can shoot them an email at alex at superbridge.app and they'll uh, get you a little production uh, managed service going. Or if you want to do something on your own, there's a warp UI template that works almost out of the box um, that you can see on the docs and that's all ready to go and configured. So for this sandbox, all we have to do is take that uh, config that we generated in the CLI and just pop it in. So we hit the gear button, we customize the routes, and we're going to enter that YAML here. And let's see how this goes for us. So we're going to connect a wallet. And we're all set. And we're going to go from base to Zora. So now that's here. And we're going to use Brett. And let's say we're going to do one Brett. And we're going to move it um, over to Zora. And so it'll cost 0 0.002 cents. So let's make this happen. And let's approve it. And we are all set. In a moment, let's make that a bigger cap. And just so you know, this is an ex, uh, once we start this bridging, that's going to be um, an Explorer transaction link that you'll be able to pop out to. So you can see it live on Basecan. You also um, can take a look in the Hyperlane Explorer as well. So you can search by your own wallet address and then filter and see your transactions there. And, and there we go. So we've got all that uh, taken care of. And so if you want to just see that successful transaction. It popped out and um, we actually can add Brett to our wallet. Um, I've already done it, but if you uh, on your own, once you're done, you want to add token to MetaMask because normally uh, when you mint a new token, uh, MetaMask may not recognize it out of the box. Um, so that's that hippie RC20 synthetic on Sora. That's the Brett. Um, and so once that's done, uh, you're pretty much all set. Um, like I said, you totally could just, this is the wallet address. So totally could just paste it over here and see transactions. Um, so this is the one that we just did two minutes ago from base to Zora. And like I said, uh, Hyperlane Explorer also allows you to see a view of it in addition to the on-chain Explorer. So one important thing to note is that you actually have a persistent link um, that you can share, um, but it does change every time that you add a different config. So you're going to have to bookmark it, label it, and make sure um, that you save it um, so that you can share it around. Um, and then uh, from there, uh, if you want to go into production, obviously we mentioned here's a couple different UI paths um, with either Superbridge as a managed service or the Warp UI template. There's also some options around how do we actually uh, improve our contract security to get there. And so you can see all of these guides here. What we talked about was this Bridge a Token guide and Bridge UI is the steps here. Um, but going to production, what you'll want to do is two different things. Um, so one, like we said, we had a trusted kind of security setup. Um, so that we could just uh, get started pretty quickly. And so this guide will walk you through how to change that. Um, and so you'll use probably the default security setting, at least so the, the number of um, <clears throat> validators that are set up on the mailbox in each, and you'll be able to trust them. And then on the transfer ownership side, so right now the contract obviously is owned just by one uh, EOA, um, and so that's not the right posture, and so you're going to move it to a multi-sig. And so that's how you set it up and transfer that contract. General, we're happy to help, so feel free to reach out on the developer channel on Discord, and also feel free to post on Twitter if you actually 
uh, we're able to successfully get through this. I hope that you uh, were able to beat me time-wise, but we were able to get it done in just a couple minutes and as promised to see like command. So thanks everyone.